good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, or maybe middle of the night to you. I really don't know what time you're listening to this, but uh, it's the afternoon for me, and I'm going to go ahead and to begin this series of lectures doing Chapter 1, Lesson 1 in your Advanced Algebra book, and uh, hopefully we can uh, find this helpful to you as we go throughout the year. So Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Advanced Algebra, we're going to look at properties of real numbers, and I'm going to divide this uh, lecture into two videos. So the first video here will cover the ordering of the real numbers. Uh, the second video will then cover some properties of the real numbers, vocabulary, and a look at absolute value. So we'll break those up so you don't have to listen to it all at once. Um, but you will need to cover both of these. So let's look at real numbers and how do we order them. The nice thing about having numbers is that we can put them in order. And having things in order is always a nice thing. Um, eventually, someday, you're going to get older, you're going to get married, and you're probably going to have children, and you're going to start teaching your children some things. And one of the things we like to teach our kids from the very beginning is how to count. And usually we can start with toys or fingers, and, oh, how many fingers do I have up? Uh, look, I have one, two, three, and we start with these numbers, one, two, three, and they're very natural for us to use because those are the things that we use most often. So this first set of numbers we want to look, are, look at are called natural numbers. So the, they are the numbers that we naturally use, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc. So these are called natural numbers. Now later on, you might have to discipline your child and you may have to take away the toys. It would be another good teaching moment to teach them about the next set of numbers, and that's the whole numbers, because the whole numbers, what you do is you take the natural numbers, and now you include, include zero. So you might have to say to your child, oh, you have zero toys now because you were disobedient or whatever. So whole numbers um, include the natural numbers, and then we just include one extra number in there, the number zero, and that makes us the, gives us the set of whole numbers. We then later on, as you begin to teach your children, you start to te uh, start to teach them about opposites. Uh, what's the opposite of one? Negative one. What's the opposite of two? Negative two. So if you take these whole numbers then and you add in your negative numbers, now you have the set of numbers of what we call integers. And this is going to be uh, a word you'll hear me use a lot this year, so make sure you uh, take special note. Integers, and what integers are, are you take all your whole numbers, and then you add in their opposites. So you have the whole numbers and their opposites. So these are the first three sets of numbers that we look at. And what's nice about these is they don't contain that one thing nobody likes to talk about, fractions. See, but we have to have fractions, because in real life, Sing, things rarely come out even. So we have these numbers that include fractions. And so if we take our integers, all our positive numbers, all our negative numbers, and we start adding in fractions to them, whoops, now we include what we have called our rational numbers. So our rational numbers include all of the integers, but now we have fractions and decimals. And speaking of fractions and decimals, let me take one point right here real quickly. I want you to notice, uh, like if I took the fraction one half, okay, if you were to put that in a calculator to calculate it out, you could write that as a decimal as 0.5. Now what I want you to notice here is that there's no difference between one half and 0.5. They actually mean the same thing. There's no difference. So taking the time to change a fraction from one half into its decimal form really is a waste of time as far as mathematics go. And actually, Fractions, I know you're not going to believe me, but I'm going to try to convince you throughout the year. Fractions are actually easier to work with, with de than decimals. Because decimals almost always are going to require that I need a calculator. Um, if I wanted to square, for instance, 0.25, well, what's 0.25 times 0.25? A lot of us can't kind of do that in our head unless we know it. However, if you take the fraction form of that, 1 fourth, and you square it, well, it's easy because you're dealing with these whole numbers to square it. All you have to do is square the 1, square the 4, 1 16th. I can do that very quickly without a calculator. So actually working with fractions in the long run becomes a lot easier. Uh, and hopefully I can convince you of that as we go throughout the year. But I do want you to make that distinction right here. Now, 
we're going to add in another set of numbers here that really has no relation to these. It doesn't fit with any of these that we have. And these are called irrational numbers. Okay? An irrational number is a number that if you were to look at its decimal form, uh, the decimal form would never end, like 0.5, that ends, or it never repeats, like 0.3 repeating. If you have a number that doesn't do either one of these, then you have what we call an irrational number. Okay, And an irrational number is the most common ones you're going to run into throughout this year are what we call square roots that aren't perfect squares. So for instance, if I take the square root of 2, well, the square root of 2 doesn't come out even. So if you were to write the square root of 2 in its decimal form, the decimals would never end. They would go on forever and ever and ever. And they would never repeat. So therefore, it would be an irrational number. Another number that you've probably heard of before is the number pi, which we like to use its decimal equivalent, 3.14, but it really doesn't end at 3.14. It actually goes on forever. So pi is another number that we would call irrational. Now, one thing I want you to notice here is that rational numbers and irrational numbers are separate sets, meaning a number that's rational cannot be irrational at the same time, and a number that's irrational cannot be rational at the same time. So when you go to identifying these numbers as being either, either rational or irrational, make sure you don't put both because that's impossible. Okay? So it's impossible to be both rational and irrational at the same time. Now, if you take these rational and irrational numbers all together, we have what we call the set of real numbers. So real numbers include all of these together. So every number you've ever heard of that you ever deal with is going to be a real number, which kind of might make you ask the question, well, why do we have to call them real? Are there unreal numbers? And actually, yes, there are. There are numbers that are called imaginary numbers. We'll look at those later this year, and that's a whole other set of numbers. Okay, But this is all we're dealing with right now. Now, there's one final thing that I want you to take note of as when it comes to uh, real numbers, and that's how do we represent these graphically. This year we're going to be doing a lot of things and representing a lot of things graphically, and so here's the first thing we want to do. How can I write, draw a picture that represents all of these numbers? And there, there are an infinite number. They go on forever. And here's how you do it. If you take a number line and you just draw a number line and you put an arrow on each end, which indicates that these go on all the, uh, forever in both directions. And then let's say I just put zero here to give me some reference as my origin. What I've just done is given you a graphical representation of all of these numbers. All of these numbers are on this number line somewhere. This is the graphical representation of all real numbers. So what I'm saying then is that you can find any of these rational numbers irrational numbers, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, you can find any of them somewhere on this number line. So if I wanted to find the natural number 3, well, that might be right about here. I can find a natural number. A whole number, like the number 0, I can find right here. It's on the number line. An integer, uh, say a negative 3, I can find that on this number line. I can find a rational number, a fraction. Let's say this is 1, a fraction might be here, 1 half. That rational numbers on there. I can even find irrational numbers on here, like the square root of 2 might be about right there. So all of these numbers that are real, I can find somewhere on this number line. And so this number line is a graphical representation of all of those numbers. So as we go throughout this first chapter in particular, we're going to be using the number line a lot to show or give a picture of our answers. We're not only going to find out what x is algebraically from an equation, we're also going to want to show it graphically, and it's going to be on a number line where we show that. So we'll do more of that later. So real quickly then, that takes care of all of our numbers. Let's do a couple of examples of something you might have to do in your homework. So here I have listed all of the possible uh, sets of numbers, and I'm going to give you a number, and it says to which set of numbers, plural, does each number belong? So a couple of reminders. Every number is going to be a real number. So A is going to be a part of every single answer that you give here. That's number one. Number two, remember, is that if it's rational, 
it cannot be irrational as well. And vice versa, if it's irrational, it cannot be rational or any of these actually if it's irrational. So keep that in mind so you don't mix those up. So real quickly, an example. So the number negative 6. And the best way to do this is to start with the smallest set of numbers and ask yourself a question. Self, is negative 6 a natural number? Is it one of my natural numbers? Well, no, because natural numbers are 1, 2, 3. Then go to the next set, whole number, and ask yourself a question. Self, is negative 6 a whole number? Well, no, because uh, negative 6 isn't a natural number and it's not 0. Then you go to the next set. Self, is it an integer? Well, yes, an integer is where we start including negative. So this negative 6 is an integer. Now, because it's an integer, it's going to be every other set above that as long as they don't cross over. In other words, an integer is going to be rational. Because it's rational, it cannot be irrational. And then every number is real. So the answer to this would be the negative 6 is a real number, a rational number, and it's also an integer. Okay. Let me do one more for you, and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so that's negative 6. So let's grab one more number out of here. Ooh, that's kind of difficult. I don't want to do that one right now. How about the square root of 6? Now, remember, the square root of 6 is a perfect square. Is there a number that's multiplied by itself is equal to 6? No. 2 times 2 is 4. That doesn't work. 3 times 3 is 9. No. So, again, it's not a natural number. It's not a whole number. It's not an integer. It's not a rational number. It is irrational because it's a square root that's not a perfect square. And again, everything's a real number, so it's going to be an irrational and a real would be the two answers for this. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful, and uh, we just wrapped up our first lesson. Uh, for, oh, sorry, for part two of this chapter lesson, uh, chapter one, lesson one, uh, take a look at properties of real numbers two, the video number two for the rest of the lesson. Okay.